What's up? Welcome back to the shop. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to install a 6 inch riser block on this Porter Cable bandsaw. Now what this is going to allow me to do is it's going to change the resaw capacity from 6 inches to about 12 inches. This will allow me to cut thicker pieces of wood through this machine. Now I bought this bandsaw a couple years ago. I bought it second hand for about maybe like 200 bucks. You can still buy this exact bandsaw at Lowe's right now. It's a really good beginner level bandsaw. When I purchased this, I had the intention of installing the riser block and at the time Porter Cable had one. So I placed my order, they said it was going to be on back order, long story short, they discontinued the item and I, ne I never got one. So I started searching around on the internet and I found a few guys that were using jet riser blocks on Porter Cable, the, probably the most similar thing to the Porter Cable that, you got, that you're going to be able to find. So yeah, today I'm going to show you guys what's involved in making that modification. So let's get started. We're going to start with taking off the table and our blade and then we'll open up the side over here. Now that we got the blade removed, we're going to remove this blade guard. To remove this bottom plate, I had to remove the door to be able to get to this screw here. I disconnect all my wires from the switch. Um, but before you do that, make sure you take a picture of your wiring so you know how to put it back once, you, once you're reassembling this thing. Now I'm going to undo this lower one, this lower cable, because it's connected to our motor and this half of the machine is about to be removed, so got to get it out of there. All right, now that the wires are out of our way, we need to move on to removing this bolt. Now this is where things get a little bit tricky because this is a pretty big bolt. It's not a size that you probably have laying around your shop. I think the top is 29 millimeters and the bottom is 26. So that's both are pretty, pretty large sizes. Um, so after scrambling around trying to find stores that might have that set, what I found that worked is this kit from Harbor Freight. It's a 14 piece standard kit that goes all the way up to one and a quarter. Out of this kit, the two that I found that work are the one and one eighth and the one and one sixteenth. We'll do this on the top nut, this on the bottom, and this works perfectly. Just slide it out. There we go. Now we're gonna remove the top. Be careful, this thing's really heavy. All right, now we have half a bandsaw. Now let's go check out the kit from Jet and I'll uh, show you what's all included in that. All right, so here's our riser block kit from Jet. Let's see what's all included. We got our riser block, of course. Comes with two new blade guards that are definitely longer. Let's see if that fits. Oh, this is kind of nice. They give you a uh, new uh, blade since you're going from a 93 inch blade to a 105 inch blade. So that'll be nice to have one to test it out once we get this thing put together. And then this is a new guide post that's also a lot longer. That's awesome. Let's uh Start piecing this back together and seeing what fits. All right, first things first, we need to fit the riser block to our base. If you look right here, we have these alignment pins right here. And if you look down here, we have the holes, but of course they don't match up since we're dealing with two different brands here. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little template using the underside of our top piece 
because we know that these match up with this here. So we'll make a little template with our top that matches uh, up with the bottom and we can drill some new holes. All right, so we're just gonna put a piece of paper over this, kind of fold it, tape it to our top. Now I'm just going to take my scissors and cut this out. Alright, there's our little template so we can mark our holes. Alright, we've got our template drawn. Uh, the one little issue that you have is that this riser block is slightly narrower than this right here. So, um, it seems a little bit difficult to center this up here. So what I'm gonna do is since I know that this and this piece line up perfectly around the outsides, I'm gonna take our template and I am going to align that with this back corner here. So I'm gonna line that perfectly up here and here. So we'll have a little bit of overhang here with our riser block, but that's fine. I just know that if I line the, the template up with a corner, um, everything should line up just fine. So this corner will match up with this back corner here. So I'm gonna take our template just like that, make sure that's good and square, but I'm just gonna line it up with this and I'm not too worried about the overlap. There's a little bit of overlap here. If you can see that um, here and on this side, it will be just fine. Just line it up with one corner and that way you know that this corner, this corner, and this back corner are all going to line up just right. And, and just so y'all know, that I measured these pins at about a quarter of an inch and these are about five sixteenths of an inch. So there is a little bit of play in here. So we're, the holes that we drill here will be five sixteenths holes and uh, that will give us a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to lining this thing up. I'm going to do some quick measurements off this back corner. Make sure everything's going to line up just right. That looks just about perfect with that pin. Yep, that's dead center. With our template, that's going to be perfect. Alright, now that we took those measurements, I feel pretty confident that everything's lined up. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and punch out the center so we can start drilling. Alright, we're at the drill press. I'm going to start with an eighth inch bit to get these holes going, make sure they're centered up. Now we'll jump up to a bigger bit. We're going to work our way up to five sixteenths. We got our new holes drilled here and here. Let's see how it fits. Uh, so perfect. Lined up with that back corner. It's going to be a little bit of an overlap here on, on this on these two sides, but that is so perfect. I got that lined up so nice right here in that back corner. All right, now that is perfectly lined up with this back corner. We'll do another template or measurements off this back corner and we'll drill new holes here and here to match up with these studs. And it should line up just right. Instead of doing a paper template for this, I'm just gonna take some measurements and then I'll transfer it over to the top half of the bandsaw. So we're going to drill dead center here, and we'll punch our center holes. All 
Alright, I'm the truth. Oh, that's perfect. Alright, let's see if we can get the bolt in there. I have to... Our riser block fits. It lines up so perfect right on this back corner, which means that this back corner and this back corner match up perfect just like it was before. It is perfect. All right, for the top of the bolt, I'm just gonna use a wrench. None of the Harbor Freight wrenches that we used earlier work on the top nut. And then on the bottom, I'm using a 15 16 socket for this new bolt. All right, let's start buttoning this thing back together. Here's put the bottom plate back on. And then we'll get our wiring put back together. All right, so now we're gonna move to this section of the saw. We're gonna remove the upper blade guard and uh, install that new post. And that should be pretty easy. First thing we're gonna do is remove this little snap ring and I think everything will just slide right out. All right, I forgot to mention this when you're taking out your old guide rod. Right here, there's a set screw, and behind that set screw is a spring and a ball bearing. And what that does is it puts pressure on your guide rod so that when you're loosening it and adjusting it, the rod doesn't just like slam down. So uh, that's gonna that ball bearing is gonna come flying out when you remove the old guide rod. So when you go to put in the new one. Um, just be sure to put that back in there. So we'll put the rod in there like that. We'll put the bearing in, the spring, and then this is the little set screw. Screw that in. And right now this thing can just kind of fall out of here really easily. But once we get some tension on it, it see, now it's gonna hold itself. The rod will hold itself in place so it's not gonna slam down. And then, We'll put in our, our screw to hold it, like lock it down. So that's perfect. Just wanted to just wanted to remind you of that bearing that's in there. All right, now we're gonna install the actual blade guide. I'm upgrading this saw using uh, jet uh, blade guides. You can just use the regular factory ones if you want to. That it'll bolt right up. But it is kind of convenient because since it's jet and this is a jet riser block, everything else bolts up pretty easily too. These guys are just a whole lot more adjustable, so I think they're going to be a better fit. Now I'm going to remove the lower blade guide so that I can install the new blade guide. Before we tighten this down, I'm gonna put the blade in here and um, make sure it lines up pretty well. So there's a lot of adjustment here. I got these guides because I like the uh, bearing guides so much better than those block guides. And this one's really easy to adjust. If you loosen this screw on the side, you can uh, adjust these guys really easily. They're on a cam, so you can turn them in and outward like that. You just kind of set them where you want. Just like that. And then tighten them back up. But yeah, I really like this setup. Much better than the stock guides that it came with. All right, and 
then here's our blade guide. I'm not gonna install it right now because I wanna go ahead and paint it black, but it's a direct fit. It just slides on there perfectly, and then we'll bolt it up. But like I said, I'm gonna get this thing painted before installing it. that on. I love that this is a direct fit. It just like it was made for it. All right, let's get the blade on here and test this thing out. blades on there. Thing looks good. Let's test this thing out. Perfect. Runs nice and smooth. Alright guys, we now have a little over 12 inches of resaw capacity. Really happy with this. Super easy project. Other than the alignment holes in the block itself, this was a this was a really simple project. Everything pretty much bolted right up. Um, the reason I did this video is just I couldn't find a video out there on this project and I know people have done this modification, so I just wanted to show people what they're getting into with this with this modification. So so yeah, if you have a portable cable bandsaw and you want that riser block with a little bit of modification, this Jet riser block will definitely works works great, and you can get an extra six inches of resaw capacity. But anyway, hope this video helps somebody out. We'll see you in the next video.